You've probably heard of the dirty dozen, the 12 types of produce that are most contaminated with pesticides. According to the Environmental Working Group, you should only eat organic versions to avoid the health harms of pesticides, like cancer, obesity, and infertility. But here's the thing. The Dirty Dozen's ranking system is seriously flawed and amounts to fear-mongering around food. In this video, I'll debunk the Dirty Dozen and free you from that food fear. Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishville. I'm Dr. Lara. Each year, an advocacy organization called the Environmental Working Group, or EWG, publishes the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. According to the EWG, you should only eat the Dirty Dozen if they're organically grown, but could consider conventional for the Clean 15. Their annual report always generates lots of buzz, and may have even permeated your psyche while grocery shopping. Most just take these rankings at face value, but when you dig into their methods, it becomes evident that they lack scientific credibility. Let's start with the raw data. The EWG doesn't conduct tests themselves, but rather they use data from the USDA Pesticide Data Program. Since the 90s, the Pesticide Data Program has been measuring pesticide residues on produce available across the United States, with a special focus on foods consumed by young children. Samples of fruits and veggies are washed in water and then tested with lab techniques that can detect super low concentrations, down to the parts per million. They compare the detected pesticide residues to tolerance thresholds determined by the EPA. And this helps differentiate between residue and risk, a really important distinction when we're talking about health. Residue means any detectable level of pesticide based on their super sensitive laboratory equipment. Risk refers to a level of pesticide that exceeds the EPA's tolerance threshold. More on how those thresholds are set later. In their annual report, the Pesticide Data Program highlights how much produce has residue levels higher than the tolerance thresholds. The latest report from 2020 stated that more than 99% had residues lower than the EPA tolerances. Their conclusion? Whether conventional or organic, U.S. fruits and veggies are safe. The Environmental Working Group uses the same data but their interpretation ignores the distinction between residue and risk. The Dirty Dozen ranking looks at six criteria, percent of samples with detectable pesticides, percent with two or more pesticides, average number of pesticides on a single sample, average amount of pesticides, max number of pesticides on a single sample, and the total number of pesticides on the crop. All six of these criteria are weighted equally to come up with their ranking per produce. Now, if you're wearing your science hat, you can see that these criteria are focused solely on residue with no link to health risks. Only the average amount of pesticide criteria has any consideration of exposure load. And even that isn't linked to tolerance thresholds. In fact, the EWG seems to proudly declare that their method does not incorporate risk assessment. Their ranking is driven by the assumption that any amount of pesticide is dangerous. And that is a fundamental misunderstanding about physiology. It is the dose that makes the poison. Also, when analyzing data, scientists are skeptical about outliers. It's like if you wanted to know the average income of patrons at your local diner, and then Elon Musk walks in, your average is gonna be heavily skewed towards your Elon outlier. But in this ranking system, they actually weight their data towards the outliers with this max number of pesticides on a single sample criteria. To me, ignoring any level of risk assessment makes the dirty dozen void of scientific credibility. This has been the interpretation of other scientists too. Toxicologist Carl Winter modeled pesticide exposures based on residue data and food consumption patterns for the daily dozen culprits. He found that pesticide exposures are generally a thousand times lower than EPA tolerance thresholds. Another way to look at this is how much produce would you need to eat in order to even approach a concerning level of pesticide. And the Alliance for Food and Farming has a great tool to do just this. Link in video description. I am a woman. I'm interested in strawberries. A woman could consume 453 strawberries in one day. 
Whew. And if a serving of strawberries is eight strawberries, that's over 3,600 strawberries in one day. I know you may still have some questions. I did. Something I wondered was how much can I trust the EPA's tolerance thresholds? How sure can I be that a lower level of pesticide isn't dangerous for me or a kid? So I dug into how the EPA defines these thresholds. Pesticide risks depend on two things, toxicity or how poisonous it is, and exposure or how much. For all chemicals, even water, it is the dose that makes the poison. First, the EPA performs toxicology studies by chronically exposing lab animals to pesticide to figure out what dose is associated with no adverse effects in the most sensitive tissue. To account for uncertainty, they divide this dose by a safety factor, which is typically 100. That means that the dose threshold is set at 100 times lower than the dose where no health effect is observed. Then they figure out the cumulative exposure level in humans from food, water, and residential usage, and consider exposure to other chemicals that are similarly processed by the body. The toxicity and exposure data is integrated together to come up with a tolerance threshold. To me, I feel very confident in these thresholds, especially with those safety factors setting levels at least 100 times lower than any dose linked to health effects. I will enjoy these conventional strawberries freely. The Dirty Dozen report also cites studies linking the health risks of conventional produce, and I read all of those too. Several studies reported higher urinary pesticide levels in people who said they rarely ate organic compared to organic consumers. While this may sound scary, these studies didn't actually link urinary pesticide levels to any meaningful health outcomes. There were a bunch of other studies using questionnaires asking how often people ate organic and then looked at health outcomes years later, like obesity, metabolic syndrome, cancer, and fertility. I found the results of these studies to be pretty weak because very few adjusted for other major confounders like income, education, physical activity, and overall diet quality, all factors that we know are strong drivers of better health. In my opinion, these studies support that eating organic is more a marker of affluence. We all want to make the best choices for our health. My goal as a nutrition scientist is to dig into the data to help you identify what matters most. And I get it, pesticide risks are scary and come with a level of uncertainty. But there have been studies that put those risks into context. My point is not to debate organic versus conventional farming. I am a strong advocate for choice. It's a common myth that pesticides are not used in organic agriculture. Only specific pesticides are permitted for organic growing. What I am critiquing is the method used by the environmental working group to generate their dirty dozen list. The reason I get so fired up about this is because they're fear-mongering around safe and healthy food. Their dirty dozen implies that if you care about your health or the health of your kid, that you have to eat organic. There just isn't data to support that organic is healthier based on pesticides or anything else. What there is ample, consistent, and compelling data on is that eating more fruits and vegetables is healthier. One of the most impactful things you can do to improve your health is eat more plants. Organic food is more expensive and inaccessible to many people. There's also evidence that dirty dozen messaging may reduce consumption of all produce. When lower income shoppers were told on a survey about the dirty dozen, 15% said that they were less likely to purchase fruits or vegetables of any kinds. The fear mongering is real. So what do we do with this information? First, disregard the dirty dozen. Then aim to eat more fruits and veggies of all kinds. Conventional or organic, it's your choice, depending on what is available, accessible, and delicious to you. Your microbiome will thank you for that diversity. It's always a good idea to wash your produce before eating it. That can mean rinsing under water for about 15 seconds or scrubbing tough skin produce with a brush. And most important, just get jazzed about fruits and veggies. There you have it, the Dirty Dozen debunked. 
That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out all my references in the video description and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.